Hello everyone, and welcome to Going the Distance. So for today's poem, we're going to take a look at Dreams by Langston Hughes. So let's jump right into it. Hold fast to dreams, for if dreams die, life is a broken winged bird that cannot fly. Hold fast to dreams, for when dreams go, life it's a barren field, frozen with snow. So this is another poem that I really enjoy. And the cool thing about this poem is that it's very short and to the point. And that's something that I really like about poetry, because when you are reading a poem, my idea about how poems should be is that it needs to be just coming in hard with a strong feeling that then leaves the reader really thinking about it. And this poem is a good example of that. Just two stanzas, four lines each. It's a very simple poem, but the concept that that poem is talking about is difficult. It's really a hard thing to really wrap your mind around. So let's talk about it. So the opening stanza is talking about this concept of dreams dying. And when the poet, or the speaker of this poem, I should say, is talking about dreams, he's not talking about, like, the stuff that happens at night when you're asleep. He's talking about the hopes and dreams and aspirations that you have inside yourself. And every person should have dreams. When I was your age, I had ideas about what kind of life I wanted to lead, and what kind of career I wanted to have. And none of that actually even happened. And dreams are often a driving force for people. That's something that you can hope to achieve and you have to work on it. Much like I get a lot of worth out of my job. I really enjoy doing what I do. I like doing this right now. And it almost fuels me. It, it, gives, it gets me out of the bed every day. And so that's what dreams should be. They're the thing that gets you out of bed every day. And so when we come back to the poem here, He's talking about life as a broken winged bird that cannot fly. And that's a very simple image. So here, this poem is really concentrated on imagery. And he really gives you two images. And they are both incredibly powerful. Because if you think about it, what are birds? They are the flight animals. I think humans throughout millennia have looked to birds and gone, oh, man, I wish I could fly. So much so that we invented airplanes so that we could fly. So if you were a bird and your wings were broken and you couldn't fly, then man, what is the point of being a bird? Just like if you are human, what can you do without having dreams? A life without dreams is not really a life worth living. Just like if a person has dreams and they allow their dreams to die, it's tragic. Moving on to our second stanza. Hold fast to dreams, for when dreams go, life is a barren field, frozen with snow. So again, going back to the importance of having dreams. If you let your dreams go, you don't follow your dreams, then your life is going to be empty. You'll notice here the word is being used here is a barren field. So when we talk about fields, fields are supposed to have crops. Fields should be productive. Fields should produce something, often food. But if a field is barren, there's nothing there. It's empty. And it's frozen with snow. So it's empty now and it can't produce anything because it's just covered and cold and dead. It's empty and useless. Just like your life can be empty and useless without dreams. And that's our poem. So let's talk about the poem that I want you to write in response to this poem. I want you to go a little bit further than Langston Hughes did. So in the original poem, what you may notice from this poem are two stanzas, four lines each, and then both of the first lines on each stanza is the same line. Hold on to your dreams or hold fast to dreams. Hold fast to dreams. That, that begins each stanza. Hold fast to dreams. Why? And then the rest of the stanza explains why. 
the second line of each of these poems is very similar but not exactly the same. So the first stanza, second line says, for if dreams die. And the second stanza, second line says, for when dreams go. So it's still talking about this concept of dreams leaving. And the third aspect of this poem is that it does have a rhyme scheme. The second and fourth lines of each stanza rhyme. So this is more of like a A, B, C, B kind of rhyme scheme. So these are the three things that I want you to have in your poem. But we're going to modify it, so I'll talk about that in a moment. But each stanza, I want you to have the same first line. You can steal Langston Hughes' line, Hold Fast to Dreams, or you can change it, like in the example I'm about to read, it is, um, what did I say here? Hold on to your dreams. I just want you to communicate this concept of not letting dreams go. So however you want to word that, that's up to you. But for each of your stanzas, your first line of each stanza needs to be exactly the same sentence. So make sure we're the same line, not sentence. So you need to make sure that you have a good line because you're going to use it three times in your poem. So really think about how you want to communicate that idea of keeping dreams and not letting them go. And then again, your second line is going to have something to do with dreams. It doesn't have to be exactly word for word like the first line, but I want them to be similar. So this is where you're going to start having your creativity kicking in. And also, what changes in that second line, because this is the second line, this is the end rhyme that rhymes with the end of that stanza. So this is where the line's going to change. What's really changing in your second line for each stanza is that it's setting up the rhyme for the fourth line in your stanza. So you're going to replicate those things. Same first line, similar second line, A, B, C, B rhyme scheme. You're also going to write about dreams. And I also want you to use figurative language and most importantly, imagery to create a scene of what the world would be like without dreams. For Langston Hughes, the world without dreams is a broken bird, well, a broken winged bird, or a, a barren field frozen with snow. So your first two stanzas are going to be that kind of style. It's going to be very much replicating what Langston Hughes is doing where you are writing a poem, talking about what happens when dreams go, and then I want you to use an image. I want you to burn an image into my mind, just like Langston Hughes does with his two images. But you're adding a third stanza to your poem. Your third stanza is going to be more positive, because in Langston Hughes, he's saying, this is what happens when dreams die, this is what happens when dreams go, Blech. And I want you to add a third positive. So you're going to start with this is what happens when it goes, this is what happens when it dies, but then what happens when you keep your dreams? So I want, to, I want you to end your poem on a positive note. So one more time. Three stanzas, four lines each. Your first two stanzas are going to be talking about how a life without dreams is not great. And your third stanza is going to show why dreams are great. And then, of course, you're going to use the A, B, C, B rhyme scheme. So I want to show you an example of a poem that I wrote. And before I read it, I just want to show you my notebook here. I like to write my poetry by hand. I know that you're turning this in digitally, but I really recommend that you write your poems out by hand. Because what I find is that when I write my poems, if you can see this, um, there's just a lot of stuff where I've scratched out and tried different words and tried different lines. And this is really my process. If you look at any of the poems that I write or anything else that I write, you'll see that I'll often go back and move my words around. Don't just write the first thing that comes to your mind and move on. Poetry is all about expressing a feeling. And in this case, you are giving me three powerful images. So you really need to think about how can you convey this image to me? Anyway, so I'm going to share, you, share with you an example of what I'm looking for. 
So, see if you see the similarities between Langston Hughes' poem and mine. Hold on to your dreams, because dreams not followed are a masterpiece left unpainted, just a dry canvas, empty and hollow. Hold on to your dreams, because dreams left out to grey become a shipwreck on the rocks of nowhere, just broken scraps washing away. Hold on to your dreams, because dreams give you purpose. They are the magnifying glass, burning paper when brought into focus. So you'll see here, I've created three images. I'm showing a painting that's left unpainted, which is incredibly sad. I'm giving the image of a shipwreck and the debris floating away. And then I show the power of dreams with the idea of a magnifying glass burning paper when brought into focus. Because I don't know if any of you have taken a magnifying glass and angled the sun just right where it burns paper. Welcome to my childhood. That's what being creative is like. That's what following your dreams is like. When you're just like burning things up, not physically burning things up, but burning things up with your heart, with your energy. I feel my creative energy over here. It's almost like a, a light. This might sound a bit weird to you, but I feel it right here. And that's really what caused me to use the idea of a magnifying glass. Cause I think when I really get my thoughts in order and I can write good poetry or good stories, I feel like I'm just refining that lens of light and just burning things up. So that was my poem. And I've given you the instructions for your poem. So I'm really looking forward to reading all of your poems. The last set of poems that I asked from you about friendship and love were great. A couple of you really knocked it out the park. And I'm really looking forward to see what you do with the dreams concept introduced to us by Langston Hughes.